Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year. As families gather at home on the night of Rosh Hashanah around the table, we begin with Kiddush, commonly known as Adus. And Adus would be said on the night of Rosh Hashanah, even if on Friday night we would not preempt the Kiddush with Shalom Aleichem or Eshet Hail, rather we would begin immediately with Yom Shishi, if on Shabbat night, as I mentioned, or, or with Ub Yom Samhatchem, if on a weeknight. After Kiddush is where symbolic foods are generally partaken. And in all Sephardic communities, except one, all these uh, symbolic foods are partaken of on both nights of Rosh Hashanah, night one and night two, except for the city of Aleppo, Syria, the city of Halab. In Halab, the Minhag was to only partake of these symbolic food items on the first night. Now, what are these food items and in what order are they eaten? And if you look in the old Mahzurim, the most common old Mahzur was called Zechor la Abraham. It was printed in Livorno, Italy, many editions. And there were, of course, other Mahzurim printed in Italy as well as in Vienna, Austria. Those were the two main printing presses for Sephardic Mahzurim and Sikdurim for all Sephardic communities throughout the world. And if you look in those books, you'll see that the order begins with apples. Now, the book does not tell you whether this is done immediately after Kiddush, before Nkila Yadayim and Hamosi, or if it was done after Hamosi. And as such, there were two customs. Each family had their own custom as to when they did this, and either custom is fine. As long as you're following your family's minhag, you're 100% okay. So, you start with apples as the book lists. And the reason I'm bringing this up is that if you look in more modern Mahzurim, as well as booklets, pamphlets, sheets that are given out for the holiday, you will see that it lists Timarim, dates first. Well, as in the old books, it lists Tapuahim first, apples. Question is, why apples first? And why is this the Minhag? And there are two reasons that I will give you. The first reason is based upon the Kabbalah, that Tapuahim is a reference to Hakal Tapuahim Kaddishin, the holy apple orchard, which is a reference to the Shekhinah, to God's divine presence. So we want to begin with God's divine presence. But a simpler meaning, a meaning that makes more sense and fits in with the ideas and the concepts of the night, is that the apple has a certain appeal to it. When you look at it, it has a beautiful appearance. You go to pick it up, you touch it, you feel it, it feels nice. You lift it up to your face, you're ready to bite into it, but then you see you know, a very, very pleasant aroma, and you bite into it, it has a delicious taste. This is the feeling and the message we're trying to convey on the night of Rosh Hashanah. We want to begin the night with everything positive, both in a period, uh, both rather, but in all senses of seeing, feeling, touching, tasting, everything that applies, we want that applied to everything that we have going on with us the entire year, and therefore we begin, begin with the apple. Now, another thing about the apple, as we know nowadays, we hear children singing, dip the apple in the honey. So is it our manhag to have apples in honey or apples in sugar? So according to Kabbalah, sugar is white, and therefore you should have the apple in sugar. Whereas honey is darker, and you shouldn't have something dark on Rosh Hashanah. Now, there were families who had it this way, families who had it that way. Keep in mind, sugar was much more easily accessible and a lot less expensive. And that's the main reason people had sugar as opposed to honey. Also, many times honey wasn't actual real honey and the hachamim were afraid that the manufacturers of honey or the sellers of honey were mixing in all different types of things into it and they basically warned the people to generally not have honey unless you were positive that you actually got it from the beekeeper, from the beehive. Now, other families didn't have apple at all, but they had something in the apple family, and that was quince. And many families have that till today. They take the quince, they cut it up, and they actually cook it with sugar, and they have this, uh, we'll call it a quince jelly, or as commonly known in traditional circles, helus fergil. 
Okay, it's a quince jelly, and that's partaken of instead of actually taking an apple and dipping it into sugar or honey. So now that we established that apples are first, what is the order? The the Zechul Abraham Mahzor has a page with the entire order of the night of these special symbolic foods, which are commonly known as Birachot or Birachiyot, or in Ladino communities as Yihirasones. And it begins with tapuhim, with the apple, with the karte, leek, salka, Swiss chard, tamre, dates, kera, gourd, rubia, black-eyed peas, rimon, pomegranate, roshkeves, the head of the sheep. In between rimon and roshkeves in this book, it mentions dagim, fish, and there were some communities that did partake of fish and others that did not. In the Halabi community, fish was not partaken of on the night of Rosh Hashanah. Now, other than these symbolic foods that we enjoy and partake of, we make sure that we have the minhag to say the hirason before eating these foods. When we move on to hamosi, if we're having hamosi before or after the symbolic foods, hamosi in all four meals of Rosh Hashanah, both nights and both days, hamosi is dipped in sugar, not in salt. Another very important fact to remember is that on Rosh Hashanah we do not eat eat sour foods. Even the Hida mentions it in the name of the Geonim that sour foods are not partaken of. We do not have things that are lemony. We do not have things that are vinegary. If you look at the traditional table and traditional households, you will see there are no pickles, no olives, not even any salad on the table because salad dressing would generally be lemony. And we want this year to be, as we know it, a sweet new year, a year that abodes well for the entire Jewish nation to school the Shimna Bot, Naimot, Vitobot.